for a period of about 18 years, video games were essentially my entire personality. Now, if a video game addiction is something that you struggle with, well, don't worry, bro. Like, I, I totally understand you because I was there for a very long time, so I understand what it's like and I understand the reasons why you might have gotten this addiction in the first place. But you know, I'm pleased to tell you guys that as of right now, I am no longer controlled by my old addiction. And I also want to give you hope and I want to tell you that beyond video games, there truly is something better out in the real world. So for this reason, I want to tell you guys the story of why I no longer play any video games. So, the library is a pretty nostalgic place for me. Because when I was young, I used to spend a lot of time here. Now you know, because when you're just a kid and you're trying to run away from all the problems in your life, um, the library is really not a bad place to be. Because it's free, there's books, and there's computers. I got this book while I was at the library, and it's called Anna Karenina. Karenina. Apparently it is one of Tolstoy's finest works. All happy families are alike. Each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Everything was confusion in the Oblinsky's house. The wife had found out that the husband was having an affair with the French governess formerly in their house and had announced to the husband that she could not live with him in the same house. This situation had been going on now for three days. So it kind of does start in places like these. In places like public libraries or community centers. You know, because wherever there's a place where there's a bunch of pub public use computers, like naturally there's just gonna be a bunch of, um, you know, poor boys from families uh, with a lot of problems. They just kind of naturally uh, gather there and form some sort of uh, video game community, you know? And it's like, when you see these kids for the first time, and all you've known is being unhappy and disorder, then when you see what these kids have, because it looks like they have some, court, some kind of joy and happiness and purpose and direction, because they're animated and they're excited about something. So obviously in your situation, you would think to yourself, hey, like whatever, whatever these kids have, well, I also want some of it because, you know, I want to be happy too. All right, so now I'm going to try to make an analogy here. Like, I know obviously video games and alcohol are not the same thing. Um, but it's funny that, like, me and my friends, we used to have this joke where um, we were essentially alcoholics except for video games. So, so let me explain, right? So drinking is permissible, sure. But is drinking beneficial, right? And that really depends on the context because if you drink because you're trying to escape, right? You drink because, you know, it makes you feel good and it makes you relax a little bit. It makes you forget about whatever problems you had. Um, then, you know, your problems aren't dealt with. And eventually, if you do it for this purpose, the drink is going to overtake you. And, and the same thing goes for video games, which is that if you do turn to video games as an escape, the thing is, on the surface, it feels like your problems are being solved. But in actuality, uh, whatever you do in the video games does not really affect what you do in real life that much, and your problems are not solved. In fact, they're actually getting larger. So yeah, I think, I think that 
if you use video games for the same purpose as alcohol, then there's no reason why, um, you know, just like how someone can become an alcohol al alcoholic, you know, um, that someone could also become a video game addict. It's really amazing how these authors like Tolstoy, they're able to so clearly just write their worldview into the story. You know, it's like just by how the characters are, how they act, how they think, and you know, the events that happen in the story, you can understand, like, this is how he understands the world. And that's, that's like a skill that I'd like to be able to learn at some point. But you know, for now, we're gonna take a bit more of a, clumsy approach, which is that I think my worldview is based off of, you know, this realization, which is that for whatever reason, if you do something genuinely, like genuinely for the purpose of love and not because you want something in return, it doesn't seem to matter how difficult the thing is, but it just always seems to somehow work out. And it's like, even if it doesn't really work out, it, it still also works out, so... It, it's really weird to explain, but it's almost like if you have this kind of genuine heart, it's like you just, you just don't lose. But on the other hand, it's like if you try to do something else, and, and it, doesn't really, it doesn't even matter if it's like something simple, but it's like if you have like some sort of deceit in your heart or the true reason why you're doing something is actually a selfish reason instead of love, it's like that thing could be could be so trivial, like, according to regular standards, but it's like, it just seems not okay, you know? You know, I think, I think that finding that genuineness, that genuine heart was, uh, was really one of the main keys to, to, com to coming out of my video game addiction. The grasp of video games on you is not like established in a single day, but there's actually like many different blocks of a foundation on which, you know, a video game addiction can then be built on top of. For me, it's like when I was young, it's like there's a lot of um, like stuff going on at home, right? So it's like there's a lot of disunity. It's like my parents are arguing, my dad's yelling at us. Um, it's like generally it was just not a really nice environment. It's like, you, you kind of want to get away from that, right? So when I found video games, like this was a thing that I could, uh, that I could kind of escape into. So it's like, I think from that young age, it's like this association is formed. It's like video game, good, home, bad, right? So, so I think that's like a pattern that I was learning from a very young age. So I think the next stage, um, 
I think I kind of go through this cruising phase where it's like the influence of video games is still really heavy on my life, but it's not really, you know, become an issue for me. So it's like life goes on. And, you know, due to those experiences that I had in the past, it's like, I think of video games very fondly. So do you ever wonder, like, who are all these people that are watching these YouTube pro gamers and Let's Players, right? It's like, I think, I think it was just people like me. It's like people like me who had such a fond memory of video games from their childhood because, you know, I guess, I guess like it doesn't have to be an escape for all people, but, but for me it was an escape. So that's why I was very fond of video games and I was drawn to these, you know, uh, these gamer types on the internet. I remember that we had a classmate called Henry and we had this joke where, so Henry's like the most studious out of all of us. And like, you know, it's like he, he gets his homework done his assignments are on time. He's like the best student out of all of us. And, and we had this joke that the reason why he's such a good student is because he figured out the system in order to study extremely efficiently so that he could uh, spend more time playing Dota 2. So then I think there's like an, I don't know, you, call it, you could call it an inciting incident that kind of changes this whole uh, video game hobby thing and, you know, makes it like a real, a real problem, like, like almost like a physiological addiction. And, and for me, I think it was a massive creative failure. I decided that I'm going to make like a video game. And, you know, it's like I was thinking about like how the music was going to be, how the atmosphere is going to be, like the level design, the gameplay mechanics, like all that stuff. And, and I guess, I guess my, my project is just too ambitious for my ability. So basically I spend like hours every single day working on this project. And after six months, I basically have like literally nothing to show for it. And, and yeah, you know, just due to like an experience, right? It's like, it turns out that doing a ambitious creative project is a lot easier in your imagination than in real life, you know? <laughs> In hindsight, it's like this is kind of expected because how could you expect to create this like wonderful artistic artifact, like, you know, having zero experience, having made something like that before. So obviously in hindsight, what I should have done was I should have just learned from my lessons. I should have just picked myself up and, you know, shaken the dust off of my clothes and learned something from, from the experience and move forward, right? But I think I think at the time, like I just... I just wasn't mature enough. You know, I didn't have the presence of mind to do that. And I guess, I guess to, to kind of run away from my failures, I just, I just went back to video games. But yeah, I think, I think this time it just got really bad because I, I feel like I was trying to run away from so much all at once. And yeah, you know, it's like this, this whole video game hobby thing, it really became a, like an all consuming addiction where it's like every single moment of the day where I wasn't working or eating, I was essentially playing video games to try and numb how I was feeling and I guess trying to numb the feeling of being lost and hopeless and not knowing how to recover from, you know, a failure like this, like literally spending six months and having, you know, nothing good to show for it. So the thing about using video games to run away from problems is that it doesn't really work. Uh, you know, video games are kind of like imaginary. The video game world, it's like a virtual world. It's not real life, you know, and it's like real life always wins. Your problems and your failures, the, the remembrance of them, it's like it just comes back in different places no matter what situation you go to. I don't know, it's like, you can't really escape from it. And, and I guess at some point, it's like I was just really lost and confused and I didn't really know what to, what to do about it, right? So, so you know, these things go through your head, right? You're like, well, I mean, these problems won't go away. So like, should I, should I just like lay down and die or something? But uh, yeah, yeah, I think, I think that relying on these video games as a crutch, it eventually did bring me down to this really really low point and and I knew that something kind of had to change there.
So the whole process of change really starts with a genuine heart and a true desire for the truth and what is good. You know, if you're hiding behind all these layers of like deceit and false pretenses, it's really, it's really hard for you to see through to the actual thing that is, you know, behind the veil, the thing that you're trying to get to. So for me, I think it was just really learning that, you know, like in myself, I don't have that much power. You know, it's like we're all people, we're frail, we're weak, we're fallible. And, you know, if we knew everything, then how could we be in that situation where we are in the first place where, you know, we're at our wit's end and we can't really figure out what to do. And that's, that's when I call it to God. All right. So at this moment, I've, I haven't, I haven't prayed in like forever. And, and at this moment, it's like, I'm literally doubting the existence of God in my mind. But I say to myself, like, you know, like, like, what do you have to lose? Right. I mean, if you're in this situation now, like it, it is what you're worried about going to be like what your friends think, you know, think about you because, uh, because now you think there's God and, and they think it's weird, but you know, so, so I'm here doubting God, but I'm like, okay, what if, what if I just pray and what if things just get better? Right. <laughs> so, so I think, I think at that point there's, there, there's really nothing to lose. So I just pray. And I guess, I guess something, nothing happens immediately, but, but something in my heart changes. And I guess, I guess I'm a little bit surprised by it because after I pray, I just know that things are going to be different, like moving on forward. Like, even though I've, I've seen nothing change in the real world, like, I, I just know that my, my entire attitude and, and trajectory has changed. And, you know, for the first time in a long time, I get this hope and this almost like this knowledge that, you know, things are going to be okay. And that, you know, from now on, I'm going to have to walk on the right path. After this, um, life goes on. And I don't stop playing video games. It's like I continue playing video games. Remember, like the whole purpose of this thing was not I'm praying to stop playing video games. It's, it's I'm just praying for for something because my life is so messed up. But anyways, it's like how I quit video games is kind of like a corollary to this whole thing. But as I'm just going through life and still playing video games, I start getting this understanding. You know, it's like I start seeing past the veil. It's like, while I'm playing video games, I start to understand, like, why am I playing video games? It's like, I become self-conscious for the first time in a very long time that, um, you know, all these things that I'm doing, it's like, there's a meaning to, to what I'm doing behind the scenes. And at some point I realized that I'm playing video games because I'm running away from something, right? It's like, I'm running, I'm running from pain. I'm running away from responsibility. I'm, I'm running away from failure. So yeah, you know, that, that's why I think, I think the genuine heart is super important because, because when you stop, when you stop lying to yourself, it's like you can start to see behind the veil almost. <laughs> and so, so one day we, we reach this breaking through point, right? So, so it's like this whole time I'm gaining this knowledge about, you know, what are, what are the actual motivations for the things I'm doing? And I remember one day I'm playing civilization six and all of a sudden I just start feeling nauseous, like, like almost like I'm going to throw up. So, so I stop playing and you know, I'm fine. And you know, that's a really interesting experience, right? Because on that day I had free time. And normally what I do with my free time, right? I, I just spend the whole day playing video games because it makes me feel good. But in that moment, I was playing and I began to feel sick. So retrospectively, I'm trying to understand this whole, you know, scenario and why this happened, right? So retroactively, like the, this is what I think about the situation. I think that at that moment, I kind of had this built up understanding for why I was doing this whole video game thing. And I think at that moment, I realized that, you know, video games is not the ultimate end that I want. And I think, I think that video games are only like a, like a temporary stepping point. And you know, like if I kept on looking at video games in the same way, 
then it would it would be something that was holding me back because I would I would then be trading like the real the real version of the thing for a simulacra, right? It's like I'd be trading my real purpose and direction and beauty that's in real life for something that's that's virtual. Yeah, so I think I think it's basically at that moment where when you realize that this is no longer something that I want, that uh that you really that you really break free from from the spell almost that was keeping you in bondage for, you know, just years on years on years. So now that this whole escapade is something of the past, it's like, what can I say, man? But, but I'm free, and I feel free. And you know, in the past, like I realized that a lot of my motivations were surrounding video games. It's almost like I was doing this or doing that in order to like optimize the amount of video games I could play every single day. Um, you know, it's like, am I, am I still fond of video games? Like, am I, am I still nostalgic for the days of the past? I mean, maybe a little bit. I mean, I remember all the times I was playing video games and I guess I felt happy, but I don't, I don't think that's something that I need to go back to. You know, I mean, I'm glad that at that, at that point when I was, you know, having all these other problems that Perhaps video games was was some sort of sanctuary to me, but but yeah, at this point, I don't I don't think I need to go back to it. Um, so it's like, you know, if I don't play video games anymore, then what do I do with all this spare time that I have, right? I mean, I think I think you'd be surprised because in the past I used to think that playing video games was like the greatest, you know, the highest form of recreation and entertainment or whatever, but, you know, I think that, uh, you know, with a genuine heart and a heart seeking for truth, I think you'd be, you'd be surprised at, you know, how much, how much good work there is to be done in the world uh, that does not involve playing video games. I don't, I don't think that I could, like, force anyone else uh, to believe that by removing video games from their life, like, especially if video games have, like, a really tight grip on your life that your life would actually, you know, uh, become enhanced due to that. I think, I think that's, that's really for everyone to decide for themselves, right? Because we've all been there, right? It's like, how many times have our parents uh, told us that playing video games were bad for us, but, but we never did anything about it, right? It's like, at some point, people can't really tell you what to believe. It's like you have to come to that conclusion by yourself. Otherwise, you won't take any actions that are congruent with, with you know, with that conclusion. Um, yeah, you know, I think I think what I can provide is, um, is some photo evidence, right? So, you know, imagining the photos up here, there's how I was roughly three years ago and, you know, how I am today. I mean, I could... I could tell you that my life is improved by it, but I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, it's like, you just have to come to that conclusion by yourself and, and no one else could do it for you. And you know, if people tell you to do things, you won't do them anyway. So <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess it doesn't matter, but um, yeah, if you're at the end, uh, thanks for watching. May the peace of God be with you. And goodbye.